Hola, bienvenidas al webinar de Casa de la India, Ancient Texts of India, el arte textil de la India y sus orígenes. Tenemos este evento en el marco de Extant Mallorca, un encuentro muy especial que reúne artesanos de todo el mundo, especialmente desde la India, y que hoy os vamos a presentar. El webinar será en inglés y será moderado por Kavita Parmar, que es la persona que ha iniciado esta maravillosa exposición, Encuentro de Arte Textil de la India. Por tanto, damos la bienvenida a este encuentro que se reúne, eh, que reúne a diferentes artesanos desde Gujarat, Cachemira, de la India, aquí al control técnico. Muy buenas tardes, muy buenas noches. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to introduce this webinar on ancient Uh, texts of India. Artists who, artists who have presented their work, uh, their textile art as part of Extant Mallorca. And I'm uh, delighted to greet Kavita Padman, who is at the moment in Mallorca, where the thing is happening. It's going to take place. Good evening, uh, Kavita. And Good evening. we also are very privileged to have with us Asaf, uh, Vankar, and Bapa, and Satna. Uh, we will introduce each one of them in the next few minutes from uh, Kashmir as well as Gujarat. Uh, let me start by saying, of course, thank you very much for letting us host this session. I know you're in the midst of organizing this big, huge event, which you will all tell us all about. And the aim of this session is to let people know first of its kind in Spain, and we want everyone to be a uh, part of this, uh, at least virtually, and if you can, also you can travel to uh, Mallorca in the next few days and be part of the action. Uh, let me introduce uh, uh, our dear friend, Kavita Parma, who's put this all together. Who, uh, clips from your uh, background. Um, she moved into a fashion industry right out of house, high school. And I mean, I think she loves uh, what she does. So uh, it, she feels what she does. And for her, I, as far as I can tell, it's uh, something that combines. She's been combining working with Uh, I think we, we have lost Guillermo. I don't know if, if you can continue, yes. Kavita, please. I could definitely continue. But uh, okay, first thank of you all, I, want, I wanted to thank all of you for very kindly uh, hosting this event mm -hmm. to uh, let everyone know about what we're doing here in Mallorca. Um, mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. been a very hard, long year for everyone. Uh, you know, as everyone around the world knows, we've all gone through a very, very hard, um, you know, anxiety-ridden year where lots of people have been unwell. There's been just lots of general problems that have made us all uh, really understand the value of human connections and human relationships. And that's why we felt that it was really urgent before we are being pushed back into the regular things, where, which will happen, right? Okay. We're going to be all told to go back and continue um, the way we've continued always because we need to build the economy back again. We're going to be pushed towards that. So our idea to hold extant at this very important juncture as we come out of this time in human history, which is quite unique, was to we feel that the artisan and the artisan's relationship with work and craft is something that we need to talk about and learn from. So just to put you all in a little bit of perspective for the event, in extant, what we try to do, it is a physical event, which has an online part as well, of course, but we have a twofold approach. We want to have people to come and have an experience of buying where it's just not transactional, 
but it's also about learning, about understanding, appreciating the heritage textile in a completely different way. We try and promote heritage textiles to be collected as contemporary art because we believe that is what it is and it's the right place for heritage textile to be because if we don't treat it like that, we really do believe it will disappear. In the last 15, 20 years, especially, we've seen a huge difference. And there are very few, very high-end heritage textile craftspeople, more and more as industry is approaching craft and appropriating craft, the conversation around craft is all about price and quantity and making it closer to mass market, where we do believe that craft is something to be revered, to be learned from, and to be actually continued because it's a very ancient language. Human beings learned how to weave before they learned how to read and write. So it was really in craft, in the way we weave, that we've kept our stories alive. There's some ancient stories in our crafts, which are, once again, just like it's as if the, you know, the Library of Alexandria was disappearing. Every time a craftsman or a woman who has been continuing heritage textile craft disappears, we are losing that knowledge. It's not written down in books. And that is something that has always worried both Marcella and I, and we've dedicated our lives to this. And that's when we decided three years ago to start this project where we bring two people together, not only to buy, but also to learn, to talk, and to build a community around this language of craft, which is so ancient. So uh, for this event, unfortunately, our dear, dear friends from India have not been able to travel. As we all know, the situation has been very hard in India, and they've really, really suffered. And the truth is, one of the people who suffered the most other craftspeople because they're in very remote places. They are not in front and center. So many times governments and organizations forget about the struggle of a craftsperson living very far away. But they also have been very resilient in that the way they build their communities and their interaction with, with each other has allowed them to help each other and survive during this really, really hard times. So here today, we've got three very unique and amazing stories that I'm so proud to have a conversation with. We have um, Asaf and Jenny, founders of Kashmir Loom, which is one of my, um, I absolutely admire the work they've done together. I think this is with such respect that Jenny, who comes to India, has taken with such love and respect um, what is an Indian tradition and given it its place in the sun, um, curated it, help the craftsmen and you know build a business that is sustainable and that with and has brought value locally in the community that is there with the help of the South. I think I'd, we'd love to hear their story and how these two very different individuals with very different backgrounds have come together, joined forces with absolute mutual respect and build this quite fascinating company called Kashmir Loom. So we'd love for them to talk about that. Then we have Bapa. Bapa I've known for a very long time. I'm a huge fan of Bapa's. Bapa's has a very interesting story where he comes from a family that has not much to do with this world. It's actually from the tea industry. Um, but he decides he loves fashion, goes to Milan, studies and learns to become a technically an art, a, a designer lives in Europe for a while and then realizes really his heart is back home where the craft is. Papa is from, from uh, Bengal, an area that is very rich in history and craft is in craft history. So that's really, um, so he goes back there. He goes into these villages, learns, lives with these craft people, understands the psychology, the psyche. In fact, I'd love Bapa to talk about a very important project that he's bringing forth, which we have here, which is the indigo and how he's gone back to trying to revive growing of traditional indigo in these villages and dyeing locally as well, which is very important part of Bengal culture, but had disappeared uh, due to a story that Bapa, I will let Bapa tell you, and it's quite emotional and quite beautiful. Then at the same time, we have uh, Vankar Bhai, uh, Shamji Bhai, who's joining us from the Kutch, um, an incredibly rich, culturally rich area for craft uh, with very different communities coming from completely different backgrounds, living together in harmony and continuing traditions when an entire village 
uh, does a specific kind of craft. In fact, the name of the in these individuals, their surname tells you the kind of craft that they're doing. Vankarbhai, where he lives, where, where this community is from, the Vankar community, they're weavers, they have their own sheep and they grow their own wool, their cotton, they, they dye their own wool and cotton, weave, they work together as a community. Shamji Bai and their family is a fantastic example of how they've put together, working together as a community, taken the step to go out of India, represent this community and brought a lot of wealth as well as a lot of prosperity to this little village and raised the quality of, of what was happening there and brought it to attention globally. So I'm really, really proud to be, uh, to be part, to be hosting this with Guillermo and Casa de la India. Once again, I really thank you guys for organizing this because as we're in the midst of this madness of putting this together during, as I say, the times of cholera, um, which has not not been easy. Uh, it's help of friends like uh, the Casa de la India and everyone that really has made us make it happen. I'm just gonna take you guys quickly so you can see uh, before we get started, at the exposition that we've put together, where you will see pieces from different parts of the world. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Then we've got here a beautiful piece from um, this one specifically is from Japan. It's by a master artisan in Japan who does indigo. Um, then I'll show you some beautiful pieces here as well. Here you've got a triki, which is a traditional ceremonial piece made on a loom that is a what is called a backstrap loom. You can see the back of this piece. It's an absolutely gorgeous piece. A piece like this could take over two years to produce. Uh, right here, we also have um, the cochinilla, a very famous dye that comes from a parasite that is on top of a cactus. It's a hand-woven, hand-printed piece using the cochinilla dye. Here we've got pieces from the Kutch. This is from the Bandini tribe, the, the, uh, the rubbery tribe, sorry. And uh, it's mirror work with incredibly gorgeous work, which is, I mean, I don't know how long this piece could have possibly taken to make. Uh, it's a vintage piece that we've been loaned. Um, here you have this beautiful Bandini piece, which has been made by Abdul Jabbar Katri, who is a national award winner. A very, very fine bandini, which is really taught generation handed over. And this is a gorgeous Ghani piece. Uh, that is something that I'm sure Kashmir Loom will talk about because Jenny and Asaf have done an incredible job of reviving this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous work. There's some pieces here also from artisans from Mallorca. But I also want to, you to see this beautiful indigo kimono that is a modern contemporary version taking into account this incredible craft that is from Bengal, Bengal, Bengal in different villages that Baba has worked together. And he'll tell you the story of the indigo and why he put this together. I'm gonna to try and bring it close so you can see, as you are seeing, these are embroidery, not embroidered. This is woven into these pieces. This is really high quality couture craft done with the hands of an artisan, interrupt, interrupted by Bapa and his um, and his you know his company and this is the kind of work they do where they revive this beautiful technique as well as crafts. So there you are, just like a little quick thing that I wanted everyone to see to put in context. What Marcela and I have put together here was these stories that we feel very proud about. Here I'll show. This is Marcela Chavaria, mm -hmm. my partner in Hi. crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and so where and I'm going to Hi. just let. <laughs> let everyone uh, one by one. So let me start with Jenny and with Asaf. And uh, what has always fascinated me about the story of Jenny and Asaf has been about their coming together of Jenny, going to Kashmir, and how she has, with her eye for design, with her culture and respect 
how she went back, she's gone to Kashmir and built a business with such respect for local custom and taken Asaf as a young boy from what he told me. Asaf has told me the story from Asaf's side, but I'd love for Jenny to talk about it. So I'll pass you uh, the phone. I'd love the Genesis story of uh, Kashmir Loom through Jenny's uh, and Asaf's uh, voice. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful uh, presentation and this as I said always, I don't have many words to thank you. And it's a phenomenal thing to do. And Mr. Guillaume and all that you've been putting together, we appreciate it from bottom of our heart. I will put on straight to Jenny for first uh, little introduction. Then I will I will also hear the Jenny. You can say Jenny a few words. You can speak. Thank you, you can speak. I have always wanted to work in craft. I lived in Iran for several years and did all sorts of research there into tribal rugs and, and weaving. And now in India, well, us when I met in a sort of strange kind of way, and we came very close. And I thought it was high time that the Kani weaving was revived. Partly, but, uh, partly because my great uncle, John Singer Sargent, had painted a shawl in several of his paintings of his work. And I thought, now, can we still make that kind of shawl? So Arthur, said, Arthur went off to Kashmir and said, yes, I'm sure we can. So we, we somebody traced it out and put a book on it and planned it all. And I had absolute fascination in Kashmir because their craft is still reviving in the old ways, unlike so many parts of India where it's dying. But in Kashmir, it's not died. And in fact, we are doing our utmost to keep it going. And I, we know Bapa because we did some work with Bapa at one time. Brilliant man, Bapa is. I totally agree, Jenny. And I've always been very, I've always admired the way, in the respectful way in which you've put this thing together, where you've actually come and added huge value from your cultural baggage, but at the same time with such incredible respect and delicacy, where you've brought, uh, you know, us off to make sure that that it feels like when you look at Kashmir Loom, it is in every way feels Kashmiri, in every way feels, um, you know, authentic. And, and I think the service you've done to that region, I am a huge fan. I want you to know that I've, we've never had the, the, the you know, the luxury, to, I've never had the luxury to meet you, but I know Marcella knows you really well. And to me, it's, Fascinating. Anyone watching us should just go and look at Kashmir Room's website. There is so much incredible, beautifully shot pictures, of course, incredible product. But what is spectacular is also the storytelling. Um, I think you guys have done a great job in telling the story of the craftspeople. And I know for a fact, because I've seen your work and I've touched the pieces myself, uh, the quality of the work is exceptional. And I know how hard it is to maintain that in today's time with the pressures that are of building a business which is competitive in the, in the global scale. Uh, and how do you manage to do that is something really admirable. And I really do want to, wanted you to, to let you guys know that. Um, Asaf, how are things in Kashmir right now with all that is happening? How do you see the future of, um, of craft in Kashmir? Well, I, I situation is quite, uh, it's, it's uh, relatively peaceful. Uh, but uh, as you know, we are going through a difficult time and it's continuing like that. And uh, we try to contribute whatever we could in our own way as, uh, you know, uh, we are a small company, but small team. But uh, as you rightly pointed out everything, I wouldn't add much. It was Jenny's very big endeavor and a great determination. And she's a pioneer and roof and a master and a teacher on, on, on all of us to showing and guiding us to how to take this beautiful craft, this luxurious craft, this skill that uh, we have in, in India, in Kashmir, into the global market, into the international audience, ensure the long-term sustainability of our craftsmen, of our artisans, 
giving ensuring their livelihoods yet to produce and maintain that quality and so that bringing that name and reputation back so as far as right now the situation in kashmir is it is difficult indeed it is tough times and uh, that's what i is i not because you are doing this event no it touches my heart when i see people like you really putting their effort blood and sweat into it to represent us and it gives us a great opportunity and our viewers in these difficult times of covid and pandemic when the world is on the halt to represent their work and to reach it to bigger audience so situation in kashmir is okay because you know as you can understand we don't have much tourism right now due to the pandemic and this but the work is happening and uh, luckily we have our team is working very hard uh, our uh, brother sapna all our team mega everybody is working together to hard to see how we are going to keep going we are doing new developments at the same time we are trying to our all our clientele and well wishers may god bless them wherever they are in the world helping us going so it is a challenging situation kavita right now mm. but uh, i am optimistic always that in india you, you we are, are yes we are resilient i think we will yes. we will carry on no you uh, are you definitely if anything i can tell say yourself you are an incredibly optimistic and always bring joy to whatever place you've been at whenever we've been together you've always been an incredibly optimistic and and a positive and a great ambassador as far as i'm concerned for india and indian way of being um so you know really proud to have you here with us um what i was also wondering is as far as the second generation of mm-hmm. weavers is concerned in uh, in in kashmir do you uh, see that younger people are learning and wanting to yes. become weavers or is that something you promote are you doing you educating training people is that is that a challenge we'd love to learn a little bit about that part well, of what the challenge is for the next generation well it is a challenge indeed i would not deny it at all because because traditionally the skill has been passed from generation to generation where the families to the families but yes due to the situation of last 30 years due to the that uh, decline into the t- top class tourism and other things and not been able to showcase things there has been uh, a difficulty where young people were very hesitant to take this on many but i would have to say you with a great uh, joy and happiness that last couple of years in fact uh, last 20 years since we are doing it we have joined it with couple of lot of enthusiastic people and now obviously because of the social media they get a lot of uh, mileage they get a lot of see we do see a great potential we do have some young people but it is not in the huge number as it should be but uh, i guess they uh, need to be more acknowledged they need to be more shown their uh, work should be have to be more respected and uh, i think there is a lot need to be done but i think companies like uh, small companies like us nowadays that was the biggest thing which jenny people respect here a lot and kashmir noom is that it has inspired many people and i do see that uh, social media has also played a big role and now seeing that indian designers generally i'm talking about india not only about kashmir that there is a lot of young people who are coming forward into the mainstream so mm. i think it has encouraged but yes yes uh, that it is true that a lot of the people who are traditional families of weavers and things a lot of their children do not want to take it but that is well understandable well, not in not entirely true in, in because you know work is hard to come by mm. they, they can earn a good a good you know a good living from us mm. yes so true that, that we have to ensure more and more so it is i am i am as i said i am optimistic but it is challenging mm. it is not completely i i 
I, I, I agree with, 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 you know, the point that Jenny just made is about, you know, as we go forward in this world where uh, any job that can be mechanized will be mechanized because of robotics, because of machine learning, um, I think craft is a great answer to what human beings could do in the future because a large part of the appeal of craft is, uh, is the human value, you know, the human beings that are making it, people who uh, I think who enjoy craft, to collect craft, they are very much about the human story and they value craft for that reason. It's about the this very human you know, involvement in it. So that's why I think that we might, if here we're lucky. In, you know, if I add here in Kashmir, that's how it has worked. Supremely, mm. it has been touching to, because it, we are an individual, you know, it, it, there's no factory here. So yeah. we are working as a cottage industry with each exactly. individual houses, individual families. Yeah. So it is very well interconnected. It's like, you know, the wharfs and waftas are really interconnected with the families. So, you know, everybody is connected. Like suppose a one shawl has 32 different processes. So mm. you mean to say you are going to a 32 different families. Correct. So that is how deep it is very well connected because once you are working with a weaver, you are working with an, not only an a employer, a, you are an individual, individual yeah, with a family. Yes. And yes. that becomes your family. That is, the, that is the great joy and strength of this craft. Of this craft. This what, how, how long does Ekkani, just for people who are joining in who might not know mm -hmm. um, about Kani and uh, how long a Kani piece could take? Uh, would you be able to share that with yes, us a little yes, bit about, it, you know, it, it depends that... on It depends on the design and intricacy. Suppose the piece which you have displayed, it mm -hmm. has exactly mm -hmm. taken 18 months. Oh, wow. But for, for, for almost two people to weave. It, it, wow. Only two people can weave also. Some of the pieces do can take three to four years. Some wow. pieces can take six months, uh, eight months. Depends on the motive like small when it's in the border, mm. it can take three months, six months. If it is all over, it will take uh, a 12 months. If it is a intricate, the piece which you have is a special piece. Yes. It is, is 1850s, 1860s design, which we have revived and we gave a similar piece which was in Vienna. That particular piece is woven within an outline Mm. In the view, which we call tahrir, mm. in which, which if you see the each motif is defined mm -hmm. and it is woven in. Inside, so that yes. is the part of the design, which is more complicated and complex uh, in mm -hmm. terms of the weaving and it takes more time. So that no, is the, and it's one of yeah. the oldest techniques, as Janie said very well, that mm. we were very, very keen to revive. So giving you a very optimistic and very positive thing. Nowadays, we mm. have a lot of young people and mm. a lot of many people have taken this kind of weaving, even the girls and the world. How wonderful. Which That's really, really good news. Which that I is really good news. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. No, that is, that is excellent news. The other thing I always like to talk about is in terms of cashmere, the word, you know. Uh, you know, nobody in, would buy a Rioja if it, a bottle of Rioja, it was made in China, but people are buying today cashmere made in Mango, you know, China or anywhere else in the world. And I always talk about that. I always mention how important it is, the, the, where things come from and the provenance of things and how people have forgotten that Kashmir, the goat, is very specific to that region, which of course now is spread out into three different countries. But it really is a cultural thing from there that if you're buying a cashmere made in another part of the world, you're not really buying cashmere, you're buying something else. And so I prefer if you call it something else than calling it cashmere, as you would call, as they don't allow you to call a bottle of champagne exactly the same when it's made in, you know, in Spain, it's called cava. And, uh, and then when you're buying it in the Champagne region, it's called Champagne. I really do believe that geographical location, culture, and provenance are such an important thing where in our clothing industry, in the fashion, the, 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 you know, in, in terms of textiles, it is not as uh, keenly followed as it is in food or wine, et cetera. So that's yeah, always been my our, pet peeve. Sorry. Well, yes, you know, sorry, Jenny, what'd you say? We do call uh, fiber pashmina. Mm. And I guess, mm. I guess you mm. touched a very, uh, very, very 
important and very critical subject i cannot yes. i'm not an expert as jenny and other people to be honest whatever little i know and i'm oh. you know myself but it is a very complex situation many people ask me this oh. you know what is the word kashmir and as you very rightly said the first thing is that all the himalayan uh, chankong oh. from chankong yes. to nepal yeah. all that plateau which is partly in tibet okay. which uh, china in ladakh in nepal it the whole range produces the kashmir so yes. they do have these kashmir goats which we call changras but uh, which was uh, mainly heard by the changpas in our area right. in ladakh right which are mainly tibetans and it is on the higher altitudes from 12000 to 18000 so giving the story of the name kashmir is many as janet rasvi monisha ahmed frank ames uh, you know hmm. many other uh, scholars and writers have written yeah. about it in different things how the name has come but to my mind as i think the better way of it is describing like the word kashmir is related to a softer wool yes, or a yes. softer you know any touch. touch yes but basically so, you know this is a particular goat yes which does have that now it's in three different countries even countries. we have other side also asking a ga for it too yes so it has this this wool has a special quality this kashmir we Correct. call it kashmir i will come with pashmina in kashmiri because yes. the word pashmina comes from pashum pashum which is pashum in it's a farsi word for a soft wool correct okay? correct it's iranian no, it's you know soft it's wool. it's and it's in like, ladakh the main there in buddhist and changpa language they called it linen yeah they don't call it pashmina they don't call it kashmir yes. in kashmir we also call it pam Yes. Um, no, no. Um, they, there is so much. There is so much to learn. It is so, a, endless. And I, I they call it Kashmir, but yeah. in my I, mind, you know, it is the quality of the goats. Yes. And it is the technicality as scientifically, it has yeah. to be from twelve to eight on eighteen okay. microns. Yes. Considered to be anything lies into that fourteen, sixteen, eighteen microns from yeah. which lies into that category is called Kashmir. the yes. only thing i will add that what kashmir as a province which is an indian part of the territory has the beauty from the centuries of is course that we used to hand comb these goats by the changpas in ladakh see this yeah. fine kashmir used to come to the valley where the women where yes. the women play the, the who... most important oh, and oh, vital oh. role in... Uh, role in kashmir because they used to do it hand combing and then and, spin it very yes, fine yes because there was yeah, no, no, they, place they, where they could do yeah. cashmere spinning in europe yeah. so there are no, but the word cashmere yeah. is a very debatable no it is and and there's so much to learn and i'm unfortunately we don't even have time i think there's so much to learn that's why i highly recommend exactly. everyone to get to get jenny's book uh she's written an incredible book about her history her life which i highly recommend everyone to look at and buy uh which is inspiring story the woven life the woven, woven life, life. Exactly, and I really recommend everyone to please go and look at it. Um, I'm going to quickly move to Bapa. Uh, Bapa. Um, By the I'm... way, uh, it's a Bapa. I have to before you move to him. I will move one line. I Shamji Bai Namaskar. These are true the great personalities here. Bapa Da, who I am a great admirer. I personally always believe he is a treasure in this country, in yes. our country. So talented and her. beautiful wife rumi and you know is a buddy yes. me and shamji <laughs> i have a great respect to who i always no, think he is a master namaskar namaskar so you can move on bapa yes bapa bapa thank you Bapa. thank you asif <laughs> I'd love for you to tell a little bit about you and you know unfortunately we do, I'm, I wish we had more time because it's, I love listening to stories it's, it's so they're so important and so little is known but bapa go right ahead and tell us a little bit about bailu and your passion for what you do I mean which part of the story would it 
Like, <laughs> there are many <laughs> stories. Which... <laughs> uh, well, I would love for you to talk about indigo. I think that's something that I'm very passionate. Not a lot of people know about the fact how, uh, and you know, I would recommend everyone to go. Please check Papa's website and his Instagram, and and you learn a lot. But I would love Papa to talk about this project where he's, you know, um, build, been working on this indigo to grow indigo once again in. Uh, locally in um, in Bengal, Papa. So tell us a little bit about how you went down that road and that uh, rabbit hole. Um, indigo, I was always very, very passionate about indigo. I, I don't know why it's a color which always, I think it attracts everybody world, worldwide. I mean, among so many different, uh, I mean, natural dyes like the Koshi Neel or the Madar. But indigo is something which just kind of, pulls people it has that uh, that um, that magnetic uh, i mean character about it and um, so when my first introduction to indigo was in calcutta by this wonderful lady called amrita mukherjee where i when i was studying textiles i went to her house and she showed me some of these beautiful blue uh, textiles from africa and earlier than that i had I mean, we had studied in our history books about the Bengal indigo connection and how there was a blue, uh, blue, uh, I mean, mutiny uh, which happened. Uh, but uh, it was just that, just that. But when I saw those textiles, those beautiful indigo dyed textiles, African textiles, then I think somehow I felt the connect that my gosh, in Bengal, I mean, I'm sure we. Uh, used to have this kind of a heritage, I mean, beautiful indigo, uh, which grew over here. And today, uh, because of, uh, I mean, various reasons, uh, we have we have kind of lost that. So it, 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 it was always in my mind. But when I when we started our business uh, back in year 2000, it was, I mean, mostly woven. We didn't think much about an, about about natural dyes at that point of time. But around the year 2006, I think 2007, yeah, six, there was a, a lovely um, uh, indigo symposium. Not only indigo, it was a national, international uh, natural dye symposium by, uh, by uh, UNESCO and uh, where uh, we thought of, of participating and we wanted to do something with natural dyes. And of course, indigo was the first choice because of the Bengal, I mean, rich history of Bengal, which I mean, what it has with uh, indigo. So then I started around uh, the 2005, I started searching for indigo that was indigenous to Bengal. But uh, somehow I figured that it had totally, I mean, vanished not only as a plant, but also as a dyeing technique or uh, dye that is being, uh, being used. The history was so harsh uh, that uh, it had kind of left a very, very deep uh, scar in the minds of, of people and mostly farmers who farmed the indigo. And um, so it was totally stopped. So last year, uh, when, the, when the pandemic struck and uh, we were all sitting home idle, and luckily I had some indigo seeds with me from long time. And uh, so I have been asking my weavers from a long time to kind of, if someone would be interested in indigo growing and every time I would pick up the topic, they would all shudder. Then no, no, not indigo, you know, anything else, but not, uh, not indigo because we have been told by, by word of mouth that if you grow indigo, it actually spoils your soil where the, where the actual story is just the opposite that it, it is a nitrogen, fixing a plant which actually enriches the soil but uh, when when gandhiji picked up indigo as a tool to fight against the uh, british tyranny uh, the uh, what was propagated by word of mouth so it became a kind of a mass farmer movement was that if you plant indigo it's going to spoil your soil so the entire farming community kind of stood up uh, against the a powerful force like British Empire, and said that we are not going to plant indigo anymore. More, and then the and then unfortunately at the same time, uh, Bengal famine happened, and it was a man-made famine where 
because the farmers were forced to plant so much of indigo that there was not much of rice that was getting planted. So there was a huge famine, uh, which kind of added on to this movement and people became even more scared of the fact that they, they never planted indigo for almost 165 years till wow. date. And so last year, uh, since we were all sitting idle, I told one of my, oh, we were here at a small plot of land. And I said, since you're not doing much, why don't you sow some indigo? So he kind of reluctantly couldn't say no to me. So he said, okay, fine, I'll just give it a shot. And that's how that started. And when I put it out on the internet about that I'm planting indigo again, it was unbelievable the kind of support I got from almost the, the whole world around. People just kind of jumped into it and uh, they kind of gave us uh, various instructions as to how to extract because we didn't know how to extract. So I was looking into various YouTube videos from Thailand or from America somewhere that how they were doing it. So we were trying to learn things on our own in the video that is being shown on the screen. He's the guy that who actually planted the indigo first. Mm. His name is Shanjai. Mm. And uh, so these tools, they innovated on the, on the spot in wow. order to churn uh, dyes. I mean, in order to ox uh, oxidize add oxygen to yes. the dye, to in oxidize the liquid. Uh, to extract the indigo so it was a huge uh, sense of fulfillment that we had and uh, somehow I felt my, I mean to me indigo is very very spiritual in a way where uh, if you look at the entire uh, Bengal's uh, uh, the renaissance of of uh, craft or art in in India is happened in Bengal and if you really date it back, it actually started with uh, a movement which was called the Bhakti movement, which was started by Sri Chaitanya, who actually started the uh, whole philosophy of uh, liberation through Krishna. And Krishna was always symbolically shown as a blue god. So sure. blue symbolizes in various levels. I mean, blue comes into our lives at various levels if you look at the history of indigo the blue mutiny which happened in bengal uh, if you look at the blues music i mean why is it called blues music it happened from that entire so it is all it has always been a source of uh, liberation it, it has been a path of liberation if you look at actually the krishna uh, the whole uh, philosophical context uh, it is about uniting your soul with uh, the higher being. So you are actually being liberated uh, from your human body and you are uh, uniting with a bigger uh, universe. So it is actually liberating. And if you also look at the philosophy of the blue color, it actually means uh, endless uh, space. So it is also liberating. So liberation is somehow has always been a huge i mean i have always associated with indigo uh, liberation and through it i think uh, my whole journey has been uh, to uh, kind of bring back the knowledge bring back uh, the entire uh, skill and the know how uh, back into the uh, in, into the state and claim back Bengal's share of this story. So that has been the main, uh, I mean, my motivation behind starting the whole plantation That's... of indigo and my well, work behind the indigo. People. Papa, you've really turned us to understand that clothing is a language and in some way you're reviving these ancient texts in this ancient story that is, has some pain in it, has a lot of history in it, and how we as human beings have to remember that we cannot let this disappear, we cannot let this knowledge go. So congratulations, honestly, I mean, when I started reading about, when you started doing this, I started to do a little bit of investigation. I had no idea that 6 million people in India had died because of 
the Bengal famine, and most of it was caused by the British insistence on growing indigo instead of rice. Uh, so there was just not enough food and how that caused this incredible panic in everyone. Um, I mean, I've been a huge fan of Bapa's work. He's, I've been lucky enough when I started out my brand, I worked with Bapa and we did some really beautiful and very difficult pieces that he was brave enough to make for me, which is to weave a uh, sequence into fabric, the finest of fabrics in Bengal. Uh, so I feel like I'm really, really blessed and lucky to have him. I'm gonna quickly ask Shamji Bai, and then later on, we'll come back and see some questions as well. Honestly, I feel, I feel like we should have an hour session at least with each one of you because you have so much to teach. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad to have had this opportunity so that people can come and, and get to see a little bit of the work. This is just a small part of the exhibit. Uh, starting 21st, we in Esbalwad will be selling a lot of this stuff that all these wonderful masters and uh, humans have sent to us in Spain. Shyam Dubai, kaise hai? Namaskar. I'm just going to get Sam Dubai to come and talk. Um, tell us how you're doing in Kutch. I know it's in the middle of the night nearly. I mean, it's quite late, uh, but I'm really, really um, happy that you could make it. We got a beautiful video that Chamji Bai sent to us, which we'll be putting up online soon. That is a little bit about the life um, in this gorgeous village that he lives in, in this perfect life that they have. Uh, Shamji, um, uh, tell us a little bit. I'll try and translate if you want. But tell us a little bit about how you're doing and uh, how do you feel right now at this moment? Namaskar. 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 Hindi mein batayenge. Mera English itna acha nahi rahega. Aap jaise bolna chahe, hum translate kar denge agar aap chahe to. I will happy to translate. ठीक है. बोलिए. हमारा काम है वो बुनाई का है. और पुरखों से ये काम हम करते आ रहे हैं कुछ साल से मटेरियल वगैरह बदला है पुराने टाइम में हम सब लोग लोकल शिप और लोकल कॉटन वो चीजें बनाते थे उस मटेरियल से और लोकल पूरा आसपास के अलदारीज लोग हैं वो हमारा चीज लेते थे और बाटर सिस्टम से ये सब चीजें चलती रहती थी आप एक साथ में ट्रांसलेट करेंगे या ठीक है नहीं मैं मैं थोड़ा सा बोलती हूँ बिकॉज़ मुझे मेरा दिमाग इतना ज़्यादा तेज नहीं है आप मुझसे ज़्यादा तेज हैं सो शामजी बाय इस टॉकिंग अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट ही कम्स फ्रॉम एन एंशिएंट कल्चर ऑफ़ वीविंग ही इज़ अ वीवर ही डिफाइन्स uh, they've always used local uh, materials, raw materials, locally grown cotton, a version of a local cotton uh, that is not the GMO cotton that everyone knows, and also their own sheep. So it's very connected to the land, very connected to where they are, and it is about carrying on this ancient tradition that defines who they are. Bolia. Uh, um, Bhai, aapko ye is after uh, 1960, huh. start with after 1960, uh, 1965 start to little bit change of uh, kutch weaving of uh, all my father and grandfather and some older people of same village. So starting uh, start to change of kutch weaving. My father got award in 1974, best craftsman in India. So my father weaved to one blanket and uh, it's a local ship pool. After few years, so Kutch weavers start to the much finer counts of cotton and uh, merino wool also. Uh, market is start to a little bit change. More uh, uh, metro people, uh, Delhi, Bombay and uh, more cities people come to Kutch and uh, uh, Kutch weavers support to the uh, old designers, NIFT, NID and uh, many uh, uh, institutes. So students come to Kutch and uh, start to the new designs, how things for weavers to how change the new market. So this is a starting uh, a change to the Kutch weaving style. But 
after 2001 uh, more bigger change 2001 is the biggest earthquake in uh, kach areas so at that time all over the world people support to the uh, kach and uh, more designers and uh, much different types of uh, support so we were uh, craft support to the many designers that time many institute so coming in kach areas and support to the craft in kach so this is uh, like a one type of bridge so so designer some things and uh, change uh, the new things but uh, uh, all my families so more work to the with the tradition and new innovation that's importance mm. of my family so uh, i have my own connection uh, collection for the tradition uh, designs tradition fabrics so all i thinking for the tradition to new innovation so all my parents asked me for the old tradition to new designs that's much long life for long life mm. just thinking for the fashion that's life is few days few years very well said but tradition design innovation that's old techniques and old ideas that's much uh, new innovation mm. so that's is importance for the kach weaving and now still i weaving for the much finer counts of cotton silk um, many different designs but <clears throat> last uh covid times is a much change for the every kach weaver start to the weaving learn to weaving for child time so 8 7 8 9 age that time go to the school and uh, all child st- uh, start for the play with the bobbins play with the subtles that's the uh, that's the tools for the loom that's the toys for the child so that's much very good uh, combination and uh, after a uh, child for uh, age in 12 13 so that's uh, much more uh, experience and start to the 18 age that's on loom so last wow um, wow that's fantastic time, that is a mm-hmm. so covid time all my families to uh, child now wow. you see the old loom so this is the play loom Wow. That's and beautiful. For the, yeah. Wow. So That's fantastic. Is, yeah. That is fantastic. You know, uh, Shamji bhai, they are talking in Europe about the new Bauhaus. To me, this is the new Bauhaus. This is the if we teach our children a craft from a very young age, I think yeah. we've got something to look forward to the future. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Oh that's amazing. That is amazing. So no congratulations. Art 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 art. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Such good news. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Guillermo if they can play a beautiful video that Vankar bhai shared with us uh, Shamji bhai uh, which was really stunning. It touched my heart. It's such a beautiful um, you know so I'm going to see if they can play it and Are all our really? audience can see it. to get a small view of what this beautiful place that yeah. Shamji bai comes from a, a life a day in the life of Shamji bai oh beautiful look children making this yes. oh mora wale the na the na jang Okay, wow. Such a beautiful place, this place. Wow. 
beautiful short video. This place is incredible. Wow, wow, wow. Shandivai, you took it. It is true Thank that you. a picture Incredible. is worth a thousand words. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you sir. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. 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 Oh, it's Both beautiful. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Vankushanjibai. Very inspiring. Very inspiring. Very inspiring. Thank you Thank so you. much to share your slice of your beautiful life with us. I think all of us who've been in cities are feeling jealous and want <laughs> to be there with you. <laughs> in this wonderfully beautiful, simple life. That is beautiful. beautiful. Now, Shanjibai, you really, you are a true, uh, to me, oh my God, that is so beautiful to watch the little kids i i wish Absolutely all schools, phenomenal i wish all schools would make it uh, you know essential mandatory. for children to learn mandatory for you children know, to learn <laughs> that's a peaceful for them so Pura, beautiful uh, ye, uh, ye hai, ye hai hai. exactly Enjoy this is life, hai, this is hai, life. yes ye life ke I love it. I love what you just said, Chandibai, because I always say that the Industrial Revolution in some way divorced us from our work. Whereas if you go back in time, an artisan is completely in sync with his work and her work because they love what they do. So there's no, there's no line between life and work. Work is life, life is work. And that's how you live uh, with a full, you know, you don't hate, you don't go to office hours, you enjoy, it's part of who you are. This is beautiful photographs, by the way. Shamji Bhai, stunning. Uh, tabhi, thank you so much for to, sharing. Uh, hamare, last me. तभी तो हमारे बुजुर्ग और पूरा हमारा जनरेशन यही सोच के चलता है कि हम सिर्फ कपड़ा नहीं बनाते हैं कपड़े के साथ-साथ पूरा हमारा भावनाएं इच्छाएं पूरा इमोशंस वो फैब्रिक में जुड़ जाता है तभी वो कपड़ा कपड़ा ना होगे जिंदा कपड़ा रहता है Wow, that's beautiful. Let me let me translate that. He said beautifully that he believes, and that's what they say in the coach, that they don't weave fabric, they weave a life. And so this fabric is alive, that it is uh, it is not just fabric, it's just not woven, it is a woven life. Beautiful, Chamji Bhai. Thank you so much. What wise words. Thank you, sir. I don't know if we have any questions from the audience or if um, you know, if you'd like Namaskar, say hi to everyone in the cut from our side. We're going to miss you guys. Uh, but if anyone has questions, uh, you can also go to the website and a little bit about Extant and learn. We have stories about every single one of these absolutely, uh, you know, uh, so talented, incredible humans who are part of this community. Um, our idea with Extant is to shine a light on these incredible stories in, and also inspire people uh, to see that there is an option, that there's another way forward. And that way forward has something to do with looking back to move forward. That there are stories in our ancient way of doing things that make a lot of sense as we rush forth with new technologies. How can we use our new technologies to tell these ancient stories and learn from them? Thank you so much, Kavita. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I really wanted to thank everyone. And uh, I think, uh, Kavita, your passion has brought us all together. Uh, people across the world, people from different regions of India, different art forms. I just want to you know, conclude by saying uh, this is about uh, many things. But uh, you know, textile is definitely art. There's no doubt about it. It's also an industry, it's a way of uh, living, it's, it's economy, it's about people's livelihoods, it's about, you know, survival. But uh, above all, what we could understand and uh, experience today is that it's about people, it's about, it's about faces, it's about, you know, 
meet the person behind the, the work, behind the art. Uh, I think that's so unique. And uh, though we could not embrace you here uh, on the spot, we've been able to share with you. And it's about people to people interaction. And I think that's what we believe in. Uh, Casa de la India is the Indian cultural center in Spain, which has been set up to promote Indian culture in Spain, but above all, to bring people together. It's a, it's a two way traffic, it's both ways. So we uh, encourage you to continue believing in what you do. Please don't give up. You are uh, strong fighters. You should uh, move forward and overcome this difficult period. And uh, whenever it's possible, we will welcome you and shake hands definitely in Spain or in India. I hope we can visit you there as well. Kavita, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank Muchas you so gracias much. a todos. It's been incredible and the, these images will linger with us and I just hope uh, we can have these guys, at least some of them maybe here in the future. We want to uh, invite you for some expo or fair yes. uh, whenever it, it, it's possible. There, there are a number yes. of options and we have, we look forward Thank to you. it. Thank much. you very much. And uh, you. hasta pronto as we say, see you soon. See Thank you soon. soon. Hasta pronto. Thank Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much.